Y'all ready, boys? Ooh! What's going on, everyone? I'm Luis Ortiz, and today we're gonna go ahead and make some Philly cheesesteak sausages. Let's go. So what we got here is the point section of the brisket. The other half we use it for, barba uh, for barbacoa. So this is what we're gonna use for the Philly cheesesteak sausages. That was wrong, you already know what the deal is. All right, let's go ahead and see what the deal is. You know, a lot of people end up saying, hey, we'll use it for sausages, hey, we'll use it for so whatever. We actually do here, man. I know some folks don't, but right now everything is so expensive that we gotta take use of everything. You know what I mean? I got the meat cut up right over here. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and start this thing up. Now, I had to cut it into small little cubes like this for the KitchenAid. But it shouldn't be an issue. Look at that, guys. Look at this. Now, I am using the KitchenAid, uh, the most coarse dye that it has. And the speed was at eight, just in case uh, any of you guys were wondering. We ran it one time. Now, here's the perfect time to go ahead and season it up before we run it one more time. This is the Philly cheesesteak seasoning blend that they have for the sausages from PS Seasonings. And I gotta tell you, man, this thing smells fantastic. Now, one of the great things about PS Seasonings is that they have a one-to-one -one ratio. Basically, for every pound of meat that you have, one tablespoon of seasoning gets used. So let's go ahead and do that. This is an eight pound batch, so we're gonna do eight tablespoons. Now something that you guys might not know is that yes, I'm a Texan, born and raised, everything, but my wife and I, we lived in the Philadelphia area up in, up in Norristown for about two years. We moved to a little town called Pottstown afterwards. And we really enjoyed the food out there, the Philly cheesesteaks. I gotta tell you, man, I ain't gonna lie. Gino's kind of overrated. You know, there was a place up in King of Prussia, you know, ran by uh, an old man from, I think it's called Sicily, if I remember correctly. Best Philly cheesesteaks out there by far, 100% off of 202, fantastic. So we know what to expect when it comes to a Philly cheesesteak, man. Now, PS Seasoning does say that it has onions in here. You guys already know Philly cheesesteaks, it's nothing without no onions, bro. That's what it is, right? So it has some dehydrated onions in here that supposedly, you know, richen up a bit once uh, it starts to cook, it absorbs all the fattiness, the juices and everything. So that's what we're wanting. So I'm gonna leave it as is. If I feel that it needs more onions, then we'll add it. But for the time being, at least for this video, I'm gonna leave it as is. I'm probably one of the very few that still uses KitchenAid, man. I, I don't have, you know, those big old expensive grinders. And that's just because, I don't know, man. I mean, they're very expensive and yeah, they're great. But I mean, this KitchenAid is pretty awesome too. So, you know, oh. One last thing before anything else, we are gonna add nine grams of the pink curing salt. There you go. All of these ratios and everything, I either read from them or I talk to the guys from Pia Seasonings, they tell me what the deal is, very good customer service. And, um, or, you know, I just start, you know, reading up on other mixtures. They even have online calculators based off of the amount of salt that, I, that you have, whatever. It's pretty great. And a little bit of the binder right over here, milk powder. Everything is gonna be in the description below, guys. Send it right back. Alrighty, so this is what we got right over here. Now I'm starting to mix this thing up by hand. I have not added any liquid just yet, but you know what? I don't think it needs a whole lot. That binder's doing its job, but I'm gonna go ahead and add some in here. Sometimes it could be a little bit too much, and sometimes it could be a little too little. So you really have to mix this thing up really well, and you'll be able to tell if it needs more or if it needs less. It's time to add some cheese. Now, PS Seasoning does sell this uh, cheddar high temp cheese that's already frozen, comes in little cubes. You see that? So we're gonna add it in here. We're probably gonna add a little bit more. You cannot have a Philly cheesesteak without cheese. I mean, that's, come on. It's in the name, cheesesteak. Now it's time to go ahead 
and fill this thing up. Try and press it in, that way all the air can come out. The casings that I'm using are from PS Seasoning as well, check it out. It almost sounds like I'm being sponsored by them, but I'm not. Tighten it down real good. Whenever you start a new link, it's always best to go ahead and get rid of all the air pockets like these that come up. They're always gonna come up, but as long as you are able to go ahead and get rid of them, you'll be all right. If you're kind of new like me, you'll start to see that the sausages are gonna end up getting a little bit more puffy, a little bit more firm, because now you're getting used to it. You're not as nervous because now you're getting your rhythm going. continue on then we can cut it somewhere around here that way we can go ahead and tie a little knot and then just get it as close to the casing as possible and this is what an eight pound batch looks like guys look at all this So the Lone Star Grill is around 175 degrees. Hopefully that drops down. I adjusted the dampener just a dash. So let's go ahead and put these sausages in. Now I kind of wish I would have um, cut them into links, but it is what it is. And there we go. So we'll see you guys in about four hours. So we are at the two and a half hour mark. Let's go ahead and check these out. Oh man, look at that. Right now is a perfect time to go ahead and start snipping these and get them in line so that they can all be nice and uniform. You know what I mean? So the reason why I have them this way is because I have the meat probe, I mean, I have the prober over here to check out what the temps are. And from right over here, give or take, all the way to over here, it's about an eight degree difference. So I wanna keep sure, uh, I wanna make sure that all of this stays within you know right where it needs to be we gave it a nice flip let me go ahead and drop it down so that we don't lose any of those temperatures and then from there we are going to give it a little wipe me down but i'll go ahead and close out the camera before then all right guys we'll see you in a bit so about five and a half hours passed by let's go ahead and take a look see Ooh, look at that guys Ooh, look at that ow all right so now it's time to go ahead and dip them in this here little thing that I have here, a little tray full of ice water. That way we can shock the casing, shrink it up a little bit, make sure that it's nice and snappy guys. So we'll go ahead and do that right now. So we're gonna put these in here, 275, look at this guy, 30 minutes, and then it'll be time to slice right on in. We'll see you in a bit. Alrighty, gents, let's go ahead and get up out of here. Let's see. Ooh, look at that. Ow! <laughs> oh, man. They're bouncy. Let's get these out. Look at that, boys. This thing is extremely hot, man. Very hot. We'll wait for it to cool down a little bit. Alright, it's been resting for a couple minutes. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what we got. Y'all ready, boys? All right. Ooh, look at that a little cheese. Let's go ahead and get a little bit of a slice. Man, that brisket uh, meat to fat ratio was amazing. Let's go ahead and see what we got. Mm-hmm.
nice and coarse you see how coarse it is right over here guys see how nice and coarse it is fantastic little cheese action there let's see here A little cheese action right over here mm. i don't know if i would call it a straight philly cheesesteak it has some resemblance obviously but i think once you start to chew onto the actual cheese itself then it becomes then the magic happens so i sh i probably should have added a little bit more cheese even though this thing is loaded with cheese look at that guys look at over here even though it's loaded with cheese let me try this piece see what the, what the deal is mm, okay that's better once you get that sharpness of the cheese man that's when the magic happens i think if you were to leave the cheese out it would be a very 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 good sausage you know just on itself i wouldn't say hey you know it has a philly cheesesteak flavor to it I wouldn't say that I would just say man this is a really good sausage you know homemade real nice smoky everything you know all that good stuff right I'd say that my first thoughts wouldn't be Philly cheesesteak however like right over here guys you know once that sharpness of that cheese gets uh, gets you going there's something else I wouldn't say it tastes 100% like a Philly cheesesteak but damn it's really good needs onions though 100% so next time I'm gonna go ahead and fry up uh, some onions a little bit then freeze them Chop them into cubes and then stuff them in here. I think that's going to be key for next time, guys. But so far, this is really amazing. I really like it. Special thanks to PS Seasonings, guys. These guys, I mean, they really think outside the box. They got, they got bacon cheeseburgers. They got buffalo wing ingredients. I mean, recipe. They got all kinds of stuff for, you know, to make sausages. They really make things real fun. I'm not sponsored by them by any means or anything like that, but just want to give them a special shout out. So even though that we didn't get the full on effect of the Philly cheesesteaks, I feel that it's going to be, I think it's going to be one of those things that I'm going to go ahead and work on. I'm going to go ahead and fry up some onions, you know, because Philly cheesesteaks, bro, you got to have some onions. If you guys had any real Philly cheesesteaks, you already know what, what I'm saying. So I'll probably fry some up real nice and good, cube them up a little bit and then freeze them so that I can stuff them in the sausage. But that's gonna be for next time. This is a really good sausage regardless of the matter. And I think you guys would really, really like it, right? It kind of has a little bit of that vibe, but it's not a full on effect. I do appreciate PS Seasonings making this really nice attempt at making it, you know, because it's different, it's great. If you, uh, the more cheese that you added in there, and I feel if you add some of those uh, onions in there too, I think it's gonna give it a full on effect. That's what I feel. Anyways, guys, be sure to go ahead and like, subscribe. See you on the next one. Later.